to a guy by the name of Cleaver, and I got an email from someone that they're in this position right now. Essentially, they have no money and no car, nothing, except they do have something because unless they're really, really, like truly homeless, being on the street corner, they've got something. So maybe a place to stay, access to a phone, access to the internet, because if you can email me, you have access to the internet. That's how I look at it. So how does a person who is so needy, so out of it, so just really, really in a bad place, get started making money with no money. First thing you have to do is self-evaluation because everyone has a different skill set, resources. When I say resources, friends, family, that's resources. You may know someone. There, there's so many things you have to do. But if you're in that really bad position, and this is what got Cleaver out of his hole, is a service business. Now, what is a service business? Cutting grass, watching kids, running errands, groceries. Because if you need money, you can't be really picky or choosy. Now, service businesses are, are changing tremendously. Or you have uh, software as a service. That's a big thing. The first thing we're going to do with this whole talk is you have nothing. We're gonna, we're like totally starting from scratch. And that's something I can relate to. And that's a position I've been into. You have only your body, your imagination and your time. Those are invaluable resources if used properly. I didn't really understand based upon my upbringing how wealth worked. I didn't understand Value. I understood that if I work 16 hours at $10 per hour, I got $160. I understood that. That worked for me for many, many years. I didn't understand that if I created one piece of content, such as a book, a course, and made it, that that could be $16,000 and I never have to work again. Whereas the $10 times 16 paradigm is pretty certain. It's very, it's just not the way to go. It's just really not the good way to go because what happens is you have a situation where you are draining your life source for really little money. And I'm not trying to be insulting or say bad things about people or go ahead and say, uh, you know, you stupid. No, it's nothing like that. It's just, we all have to learn and get to a certain position in life. And that was a lesson I had to learn. And that's maybe a lesson that you'll have to learn. So going from rock bottom, first thing you have to do is get some of the biggest goals you can muster in your, your, your mindset at that moment. Because if you are in a position of extreme lack, there's many other things going on. You're stressed out. You might be hungry. You might. I mean, these are very real things that a lot of people are going through and no one is really saying, hey, you know, you, you hear get a job or, you know, depend upon the church or pray. No, get yourself ambitious goals. It's goals so big that they scare you because this is how it works. You're here, right? And where you want to be is here. And all this in the middle is this fuzzy stuff. And you don't know how it's going to work out. But this is super, super important because you can reverse engineer that. Now, this is how I got out of a situation where I had very low, low money. And I realized I couldn't keep doing the same thing. I was working really hard. I mean, hard, hard, really, really, really hard. Wasn't getting out of the hole. The hole was like I would take dirt out the hole and it just fill right back up. And I was like, okay, this is just not going to work. So what I have to do? And when I got laid off, I don't know if the dots connected, but I figured out, and I, I used to call this scheme incorporated. Once again, limited mindset, the way I was brought up. I thought that doing something that was outside that box of a job was wrong. I mean, really, really wrong. I was like, oh, God. You know, a friend of mine, her name is Christy, 
But then I told her what I was doing, and this was years ago. She's like, that seems kind of shady. And then she ends up being a blogger of all things. But when you are in a situation, you have to use different thought processes than the thought process that puts you in the situation. And that's what I did that day. I came up with Scheme Incorporated. I wrote down a five page plan. Never did it before. I've kind of sketched out stuff, but I never really. I'll just tell you everything that I did that night so you have the proper context. I had, I was like, okay, am I going to go back to school? I'm a college dropout. Then I mapped out how much it would cost me. And at the time, around 28 to 30,000 to finish undergrad and get an MBA in finance. That's what I was thinking. And I even plotted the timeline that I would be finished roughly around. 2006. I shudder at the thought of all, what I almost did. I was that close because it was right there on the fence. Because, like many of you, I had the social pull of, hey, you got to go to college and be a respectable person and all the other stuff. So I closed, I took all the stuff off the wall, closed down Scheme Incorporated. I mean, closed down the college ideal, opened up Scheme Incorporated, created a five page business plan, and started going on monster.com looking for jobs I knew I could do, but I wasn't qualified. And I started creating credentials straight up. I got the first people that responded, which was really great. I eventually got hired and quadrupled what I was making. And, you know, I went and it, it was just a mindset. I mean, when I got in there, I had to work really hard because I wasn't qualified. I had to learn. I was buying books. I was in Barnes and Nobles. I was, I had keys to the book. This was so funny. I was a bum. I was a bum. I mean, really, it was. I was a bum. And after a drug test, a background check, I had keys to the office like a week. I had keys to the office. They didn't give me a credit card. I asked for one. They didn't give me one. I was like, hey, I might as well ask. We'll never know what happened. Then I could come and go as I please. Knew the alarm code and everything. So I went from literally being in the landfill to picking up trash. Now, I say this because I had no money. This was, you know, the whole thought of that is you got to think so differently than you're thinking now. And also learn to think with a small peer group review, peer review group, really, really small. I have a situation that was going on and there's only three people that I talk to about it. And that's it. I don't bring it up to anyone else because as you start bringing more people into your thought process, it starts to get diffused. Things creep in. So you got to keep that stuff out. Now, going from broke with the service business. Take a notebook and say what can i do then if there's five things put them down if there's 10 things put them down then that night you're going to take number one and you're going to create your one page business plan and you're going to write down how much money you want to make and this is something that people just don't do you want to write down how much money you want to make hold on a second i think someone else is trying to get in and of course See, I, I'm actually getting better with these hangouts. I used to miss this stuff. Okay, make sure. All right, and like I said, um, this will be posted in Gumroad tomorrow. Write down. Okay, now your context could be a little screwed up because if you're broke, it's hard for you to see. You know, you may go like, "I want to make six million," and you go for broke to six million. It can happen today. We have, I mean, it can happen, but it's not really plausible. So say, and don't do this. Do not do bill math. Okay. And this is what most people do. Rent is, rent of mortgages, X amount, um, car note. And they'll, they'll just go put all the big bills and then kind of round up like three or $400 for the smaller bills. And that's their budget. Do not do that. Take that budget in times at times one, two, three. Times at times three. So if your budget is two thousand, you write down six thousand dollars. And this is why you will get close, or you will overshoot your goal. If you're really, really pushing, you'll surprise yourself. So you write down two, and you come up short fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred. You're still behind. But if you write down six thousand. 
and you come up short at four grand or five grand, you're still ahead. It's a mental trick, but it's a very important mental trick. Okay, uh, let's see. Just uh, making sure that somebody could get in. So once again, do not do bill math. <laughs> do not do bill math. Then the second thing, as you wrote down your goal, how much you want to make, then what you're going to do is create a, a product or service matrix. And what do I mean by that? You're going to sketch out what your business looks like. When I say sketch, you're going to draw. No, you don't have to be Picasso. Forget all that. Sketch it out, draw it out to the best of your ability and put that on one sheet of paper. So if you are going to be washing clothes, put laundry baskets there. See yourself with laundry baskets, a little stick figure in there. I know it sounds silly, sounds a little crazy, but when you do that, you activate something extra in here. It, it is just amazing what happens. Once again, you do not have to be Picasso. No, it does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, no, no, none of that stuff. So you've got your major goal. You've got your drawing. Then you, after you do your drawing, then you start writing down the process. So, okay, let's go with the washing of clothes. You need a washer and dryer. Are you going to use your washer and dryer? You're going to use theirs. Since you were broke, you're going to use theirs, which means you have to go there and it's going to be extra time. So, okay, you, you need to make $6,000. You're washing clothes. How much does someone get paid for washing clothes? What are you going to do? Are you going to wash and fold? And also ask yourself, why would someone hire me to do this? That's a really, really big thing. So because that's how you're going to formulate your pitch and your copy. Then you it's like, OK, I'm going to wash clothes there. And then this is this is where this is why I wanted you to write the big number down. And you're like, well, since I'm going to do that. And I'll be there. Maybe I could just ask them if I could do something else for them and just put, you know, Carl's wash and fold handyman or butler. Carl's washing. You know, I'm just going along with this because this is the thing with the sketch and stuff. It, it gets you to think differently. Then you, you put together your pitch and then you email or call better. Email's good, but a phone call is better and say, look, I'm doing this service and this is the terms and do you need it or do you know of anyone that needs it and this is where you have to be tenacious really 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 tenacious after you call them up wait a week if you don't hear from them and call them again a week doesn't piss off people like every day that's ridiculous but once a week once every two weeks that's cool most people will not lose their minds and if they just like don't ever call me again just take them off your list and leave them alone now what you're doing is you are do this is called new business development. Let's look at what we did. You create the budget, you create the product, you create the schematic. See, when you treat these things like businesses, you get business rewards. So you're calling your people. So that's a marketing plan. That's an that's an outbound outbound marketing plan. And this is a little simple stuff, and it's really f because if you make enough phone calls, you'll get business. You will get business. Now. You're using their washer and dryer, using their soap. Only thing is, it's your time. Then once you figure out, and also for the side pitches, you get in and you do a great job with the wash and fold. And before you leave, it's like, hey, you know, next time I do this, if there's anything else you want me to do, just let me know and say anything and mean it. Because when you ask that question, and I'm going to give you an example of something that happened to me today, and we'll see how that happens in the future. You give yourself, a, you know, that's why the number, because see, as you start doing and activating and you wrote down that six, things are going to start kind of or filling that space to help you get to that number. And when you write the low number down, things don't come because you're not calling upon yourself that hard. So you, you next time you go and, you know, Carl's wash and fold and you do the clothes and then the customer says, I know, well, do you wash cars? And you're like, sure. Give me the keys. And then you you use like, and this is where you know trust and faith comes in. And it's like, uh, since this is new and you're being so kind, just pay me what you think is fair and go do the best job you can. So you got clothes going on, you're out there washing a the car, 
and you leave with 50, 60, 70 bucks. Yes, you worked really, really hard. Remember, you are broke. You are broke. Broke people don't have many options. <laughs> I see people are like, well, you know, I haven't worked in two years, but I'm the type of person that I need this, this. Oh, you're broke. Let that go. Now, you have Intel. Now, after a few weeks of doing this, you go back and you look at it. And it's like, okay, if I do a car, if I do the laundry, I can make hmm, $150 a day if I'm really humping. Now, this is where you become classic. This is where you get really crisp. Soon as you reach the 150, 200, this is when you start becoming the man or the woman. You go out and you find someone who can help you. And this is called outsourcing. You see, this is where most entrepreneurs and myself and my partner, we did the same thing. You get to a certain point and it becomes the me, 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 me. Now, understand, you're still not making a lot of money. And the reason that you want to grow the business and bring other people on ASAP is the minute that you get used to making 150, then fill up your life with that money. Then it's like, oh, I can't hire anybody. And then you what you've done is create yourself a trap. So think like a business, act like a business, forecast like a business and plan like a business. Doesn't matter where you are right now. It matters where you want to go. And that, that's a very, very big part of being what you want to be in life. Because many people just don't really understand how, I'm not going to say easy, but once you start to have a system, a plan, you um, will definitely have better options here. All right, so, okay, we don't want to do that. Uh, once again, forgive me, this is because, you know, I'm going to do a lot more hangouts, so it'll be much, much smoother in the future. But let's see. Okay, just making sure there's none going on because I got people trying to get in. And I'm going to do a better job of presenting this. And once again, this will be on the Gumroad tab, so you'll be able to watch it over and over again. Now, this is really, really important that you think like a business. Now, I understand that you may want to level out, make more money before you hire someone, but understand you're building an asset and you're building something that will really, really grow with you as you go forward. Now, let's see. I'm going to ask this question because I know some people are watching on their phones. Let's see what happens with that. Uh, <laughs> and we lost somebody. Essentially, I wanted to know if you could go ahead. Let's see. I'm going to go to this page. Hold on a second. Is there no some people? Nope, 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 nope. Okay, that's not that's not going the way I thought. All right, we'll see how the thing goes with the comments because I may have to do a private live event to get the participation that I want. Okay. So we're just going to pop out of that and we're going to go back to making sure that I can let people in if they need to come in. All right. Now, let me tell you uh, what's watching today. And I want you to do this. Jamie Tardy, eventual millionaire. Go to her YouTube channel. She has a YouTube channel, YouTube blog, and just watch some of this stuff. I was watching this thing of Hey, he yo halo of this guy who started this company in his uh, dorm room doing Facebook fan pages. It's an he's 24 years old and the company's worth eight figures now, and he doesn't know how to code. I'm gonna say this again: he's not really good with the technical end. He's not really good with the technical end. Now, how does that figure into what I just told you? 
He doesn't know, you know, because this is how it goes. Um, he went out and he pre-sold building Facebook pages and told them it'll be five or six months for stuff was ready. So his goal was if he could get X amount, if he could sell a hundred, which was $16,000, that he was going to teach himself how to do it and start doing it. Then as he got into it, it kind of hit him that if I built some software that did this for people, this would be way more valuable. Thus, his company was born. Now, the, I put that out there because even if you're broke, you're still creative. You still have the ability to build something, create something, be something. So you don't have to just go with that. I can't do anything. Now, let's talk about another starting from scratch. And we're going to talk about various resource levels. The first thing was you were just completely broke, no money. We're going to go to the second level of broke. What I call, I got paid and I paid all my bills and now I am broke. And maybe I have half a tank or close to a quarter tank of gas for next week's commute to work. You're in a little better position and you're in a little worse position because mentally you're tapped out. You, you're broke, you're stressed, and you just can't wait for the weekends. So you have to start looking at what can you do in a small circle. And what I mean by that is what can you do in your neighborhood on your block to earn money? Because what people want to do is go on the Internet, go to cross town, do all this other stuff. And you could literally have a few hundred to a few thousand dollars on your block in your city. But you're looking elsewhere. So just because and the reason is you're already stressed. So you don't want to get in a situation where you got to spend 30 minutes behind the wheel to go somewhere to do something. Now, if you get if it gets to that point, that's understandable. But work in a small circle first. What can you provide? Do you have elderly people in your house that need someone to look at? I mean, not your house. I mean, in your neighborhood that need someone to look at them. Look at the laws. Like, say, they're, they're good to go, but they can even drive, but they just kind of need some extra assistance. You could just because and this is one of the things about society. When you start talking about stuff like that, people's like, you should just do it for free. You should just do it. Now, when grandma gets sick and then you hire that hospital attendant, she's not coming in and doing it for free. But for some reason, unless you're in a certain container, you should do it for free. Break past that. Just go ahead and just say, hey, Miss Holly, I know you're 75 and you still uh, swing that stinking Lincoln. But you know what? For 10 bucks a week, I'll go to the grocery store with me grocery store for you. Give me your list. Give me the money. Now, here's another win. Say, you know, because what do we know about old people? They like to pay in cash. They like to do cash. You ever get behind an old person in line, they will pay in cash and dig through those little dirty little coin purses and put penny by penny down there on the counter. That's just how they were brought up. So they're going to pay you in cash. Now, if you have a rewards credit card, you could take that cash Put it back on your card, you know, take your 10 bucks off and get those extra points using the business income. That's just another thing you can do. So you can do that. You can do grass cutting. You can do uh, arranging. You can do organizing. Also, another thing that you can do if you have new money. Go to YouTube and let's see. Hold on. I'm going to see if this is, yeah, hold on one second. Is you going to go to YouTube? Because this is something that I gave someone. And Okay. Uh, I got someone. Oh, that is great. Okay. I don't know why it did like that. All right. Let me also open up this tab. I'm going to go to YouTube. And this is something that you can do. And this is another thing if you are absolutely broke. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to give this to you. Let's see if I can get it to float up like a butterfly. Hold on. I know, um, I'm waiting for my thing 
to the spinning rainbow when my computer's doing a lot of stuff. Okay, are we there? Are we there? All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You should see that. All right. Start going to things that you could possibly do. Now you've got when now and this is this just go through everything. Window screen replacement, do it yourself. You could walk around and now, once again, you, this is something a kid could do. You could walk around your neighborhood, look for people who are ratty screens, go to the hardware store and get this stuff. And it's like, hey, I'll fix your screens. Now, how do you price that job? Because this is what most people do, and they do it wrong. Well, the screen cost me six dollars, and it's not going to take me that long, so I'm going to charge eight. <laughs> no, 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 no. You go and look at what a new screen will cost, and they say the new screen will cost fifty dollars, and you say, "Hey, I'll make your screen look like new for twenty." That's how you sell that. I'll make it look like new for 20 at that point. And if you do, you know, $20 per screen, because if they were going to replace them, it would be 50. And if they were going to do it themselves, it would be their free weekend. All right. <clears throat> also, as you go through this, go to stuff that you can do for mobile phones. Now, this is something, once again, that you can do. And this is something that I got from watching another guy. You can go to Amazon and buy cases really cheap, and then you could do something to them. You could put diamonds on them. You, you know, not real diamonds, but diamonds nonetheless. You could do modify them. You can cut them up. You can do something badass with them and turn around and flip them on Craigslist. You, you know, Instagram. There's a lot of things you do, but Go through YouTube, and the reason I'm saying these these people will teach you exactly how to do this stuff. I'll teach you exactly how to do it, and then you can take that knowledge and then. All right, so it did not do what I wanted. It just gave me a notification, but you can take that knowledge learn how to do it and make some money make a lot of money so let's see let's let her in so you can see what i'm doing because i'm such a friendly fella but all right back to the screen repair now something else that you can do just pressure washing. You can rent the machines. God, pressure washing. Just take some time and think of some stuff that you can do because this is these things are sweat equity type deals. You're just going to use your time, attention, and once again, even if you don't know how to do it, if you're really good at watching YouTube, these folks will teach you. If you watch 10, 20 pressure washing videos, because there's going to be guys who are going to do you a really great job. There are guys who are going to give you, hey, this is what you do if something goes wrong. You're going to get all that. Then go out and practice and then sell that. I know a lawn, my lawn man was that. He would do lawns, and this is how he worked. I'll tell you, this is how he worked year round. He would do the lawns, he would do the aerating, the seating. He would do pressure washing and he would do light carpentry. And he just let us say, hey, I do this and do this, do this. So he cut the grass. Sometimes he was cutting grass. Sometimes he was doing carpet. But he worked the whole year. He never had, he never was off like some uh, landscapers are. He never was off. And I remember he came up with a new truck. And I said, whoa, you got that F-250. That's fifty thousand dollars. He said fifty two three oh five. I just paid cash for it. And he was the lawn man. He knew that he had to put away part of his money for repairs and things because the stuff wears out. And that segues very nicely into the money section. You're broke. You're not making any money, right? 
you got to do what I call sectoring your money. Some I didn't do, some I had to learn later in life from a business partner. But before you get used to the money and it starts getting sucked up into your life, you create these four accounts. Two spending accounts, two savings accounts. Spending account number one, bills, you know, rent, mortgage, whatever, spending account number two, special things, savings account number one, long-term savings, savings account number two, short-term savings. Say you want to take a trip. So you put that money in certain proportions. Now, if you're really broke, it may be hard for you to do 25. You may have to go 10%, 10%, 10% because you need money to pay bills. But you write down the future proportions. So this is how mine used to be, and it changed quite a bit. It was 50% was spending account number one, 10% spending account number two, 30% sp uh, savings account number one, and the remainder into the third and the fourth account. I never was broke when I started doing that. You will have months where it'll be a little hard and a little tempting because you look over there and you're like, whoa, I got five grand. You just keep saving because you're training yourself to manage money. Many people don't have an income problem. They have a management problem. And that's what creates a lot of problems with the money. Okay, let's see. I should be coming back. There we go. So that's why you do that as soon as you start making money. Okay. If you have a question and you can reach the chat, let me know. I'm going to type. I'm probably going to have to do a tut uh, tutorial on this so people can see it. Because someone responded and it came in the emails, which was kind of crazy. And okay, so while you're kind of thinking about that, and if you don't have a question, don't worry about it. This is what's going to happen for the people who show the plate. This is an ongoing thing. Now, the person who paid the most was 10 bucks, so that's the price. Now, all of you who are here, when I say, because the title is going to change, like right now it's Hustling 101, you know when you broke it's 101 next one's going to be 102 so that slot's going to change you're already in here so whenever i update it with new information or send out an email you're going to get it because you're in the slot so you don't have to pay any more money so whatever else goes down here you're good to go until the tab fills up that's how i'm going to do it number two the storage auction book is free forever and ever and ever and then there's some more goodies and if you don't have any questions what you can do once I upload this is email me through Gumroad and I'm just going to send myself an email to do this while we're all here together and it's one big happy family because uh, I will do this for the first group if because uh, the email the, the we gotta work this out and we, we'll definitely work it out so I'm going to send myself this email that you can send me an email through Gumroad after I load this up. Because after you watch this and you have any questions, just hit me up. Put. And there's other stuff that's coming. And I'm not going to keep you here all night. Amy's email. On tab. Gumroad. And this is another way that I remember to do stuff so stuff doesn't fall through the cracks. Okay. So if you can't ask me any questions, I'm not going to hold you. Uh, what I'm going to do is this is going to process. And then I'm going to edit out the dead front part. Then I'm going to upload it to Gumroad. Then probably next Tuesday, I got to look at the calendar. I'm going to do something else. The goal is to do something for the tab every week preferably like Tuesday night or something like that. Or maybe I'll shift it around to the middle of the day. I'm going to play around with the time. So let me check and see if anyone left a question. Because like I said, it's kind of weird that someone commented and it came through the email. And <laughs> this is, you know, people still trying to get in and it's over. Okay. All 
All right. So someone can reach the comments. Uh, patterns like uh, the mindset of the planet, thinking like a business, even if you don't make one, is brilliant. It's not done enough. Because the thing is, I'll, I'll, you know, before I go, I'll tell you this quick account of my storage auction career. A guy told me not to make it full time to break your heart, but I went in there and my partner and I went in there and we treated it like a business from day one and it grew into one very quickly. And that's just kept pushing and pushing. So you can do that with anything because if you have this business that serves five people, the difference between serving five people and 500 people is infrastructure. But it's the same issue. It's the same practice, same service. Once you start to scale, you got to have infrastructure to handle that scale. But if you can do five, then with the right infrastructure, you can do 500. So the sooner that you start putting those things into place of being like a business, then you will have the protocols and procedures to get to those 500. So, all right, with that.